For nearly four months now, the doors of our churches have been closed for public worship. But now, in July, the doors are open in many of our churches. What's it going to be like when we go back to church? It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a great day. And we need to prepare for that. And this little video will answer some of the questions that you probably have in mind of what is it going to be like. So we are in church, and I'm sure like everybody that is here, there are lots of questions that we would like to consider, think about, maybe know a little bit about before we come to church. And often our questions are very practical questions. So we thought as we gathered here that we would do a kind of question and answer session with the bishop. Some of the questions that you might have. I know that folk here have already begun to ask those questions. So, uh, who has uh, the first question for me? So, Faith has the first question. What's your question, Faith? I'm looking forward to getting back to church on Sunday, the 5th of July, but I wonder, Bishop, are we going to get the hymn books and the prayer books? Faith, that's a very good question. Uh, what about hymn books and prayer books? Um, you will notice in the church there are no hymn books and prayer books at the back. They've been removed. Uh, bring your own hymn book or prayer book. What happens if you don't have them? Well, there will be server sheets in the pews or there will be server sheets available in the church for you to use for this particular service. Um, so you'll be covered in that sense. So there's kids in the church, as in all our churches, and uh, Greer has a question about children in our services. Will children be able to roll the church when they come in? And will there be Sunday school? And uh, do we bring stuff to amuse the children? Greer, it's lovely to see your grandchildren in church with you. Yes, we're welcoming children to church. Sadly, there won't be any Sunday club, but that's usually the case in the summer months when children's programs are not available. So the children will be in church. You know, our clergy, our lay readers, will be very aware that they will be in church and will address them. And it would be good to bring something uh, for the children so that they can be uh, amused uh, or unoccupied during the service. Some of our churches have got happy bags or toys, but I'm afraid we can't give them out because of the hygiene um, restrictions. So bring your own. I just wonder, can my son and daughter-in-law and my grandchildren all sit in one seat? Okay. Violet. Um, can you sit with your children and your grandchildren in the one pew? The answer is yes, you can gather as a household, uh, as a family in the one pew, as long as we observe social distancing with people in different pews. Uh, Rosemary, what's one of the things that you and lots of people love to do in church? You love to sing. You love to sing. So the big question is, and there's been lots of kind of to and fro on this, when we come to church, will we be allowed? Be allowed to sing. We'll Rosemary, singing is such an important part of our worship. Uh, and who am I to say you can't sing? Yes, we're going to sing. That might be difficult if we're wearing masks. But of course, singing is not compulsory. And some people may not want to sing. But because of social distancing, we can sing and we will not be facing one another. So any of the spray that comes from our mouth and singing will not be, uh, to fa will not be towards anyone face to face. What's your question? Do we have to wear masks at most of the service? Uh, people have been wearing masks in public places and you are free to wear a mask in church if you feel that that's what you want to do. But that's not mandatory. You will, some people in church will be wearing masks, some will not. If you come to church and you see people wearing masks and you've forgotten a mask or you don't have one, masks will be available for you. So you can wear them uh, or you may not want to wear them. That's really up to you. Uh, Margaret, what was the question you wanted to ask? Will we still be having Holy Communion? and will we be receiving wine as well as bread? Margaret, Holy Communion is very much central to what we do in church. And before uh, the lockdown, uh, we were doing communion in a particular way. 
uh, and we're going to continue that for the time being. That will mean that we will only receive communion in the form of bread and, and not the wine with the common cup. And rather than going to the communion rails, uh, the wardens will line people up and we will receive communion uh, from the minister who might be masked at that point in time and he will give you bread and you will return to your pew, having come up one way and returning, observing social distancing. But yes, we will be having communion and it will be a great day when we can have communion in both kinds, bread and wine but not for now. Just wondering, will we still be having our tea and coffee after the service? So will it. Tea and coffee, Tara, are part and parcel uh, of our fellowship. So many of our churches have tea and coffee, either in the church building or in the neighbouring hall. Uh, again, because of the contact and hygiene issues, we will not be doing tea and coffee after church at this point in time. Well... With regards to our church building, I just want to know the cleaning procedures that will be in place and uh, is there anything we should do with regards to door handles and things like that? Okay. Faith, cleaning churches. Before the return to church in July, we have cleaned our churches. They've been well cleaned. And from Sunday to Sunday, uh, between uh, the su successive Sundays, uh, a group of people will be cleaning some of the surfaces that we use most often, like the door handles. And hopefully in the summer we'll be able to keep the doors open for air circulation and also for hygiene. And also places like the pulpit and the Lord's table and here in the prayer desk or the lectern. The surfaces that people will touch repeatedly will be cleaned uh, before each Sunday service. And of course, we're observing hygiene rules. Um, we have um, gel, we have alcohol spray at the back of the church, which we would ask you to use. You may want to use gloves as well as you come into church. Some of us do that in shopping, that we have a, some plastic gloves or, uh, to put on or latex gloves. You're free to do that. Please observe your hygiene and we in the church will observe that the church is clean for us to worship in and to feel comfortable and safe in. So another uh, question that we might have, some of these are to do with worship and some of these are practical questions. Laura, you have a question. What is your question? Nice. Uh, what happens if I need to go to the toilet during the service? Laura, that's a very practical question. What happens if you need to go uh, to use the bathroom, the toilets? Like all public toilets, like toilets in shops, they have been closed and we're not at liberty to open our toilets. So what do you do? I wouldn't drink gallons of tea or coffee or fill the children with orange juice or other things like that before the service. Just watch your intake of fluids before you come. Uh, toilet before the service and then when you get home, toilet, because the toilets will not be open. I just stand as the treasurer in our church and uh, one of the questions that he asks and the wardens asked as well is around collection. What about the taking up of collections? Okay. Standing collection. That's a question that a treasurer would ask. Uh, normally what happens with collection is that our wardens gather the, praise, the plates from uh, the minister who is presiding and then goes down row by row and then comes up and presents the plates to the um, rector, uh, to the lay reader, um, for God's blessing. Uh, that won't take place, um, obviously because of contact. So there will be baskets set aside and during the service you will be reminded that uh, those baskets are available if you want to contribute to the ministry of the church. And Vida, about falling ill in church, sometimes that happens, doesn't it? I think the, the general rule is this, is that if you feel unwell, uh, maybe on the Saturday or the Sunday morning, you really ought not to be in church. If you have an underlying health issue as well, or if you're undergoing uh, a course of treatment, which necessitates you being in isolation, well then, just for this time, 
Church is not the place to be. But what happens if you come to church and you just feel unwell or you have a, 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 a bite of coffee or sneezing? What we will ask you to do is that we'll ask you to leave church, uh, to go home, and if the symptoms persist, to contact your GP, and if needs be, they may ask you to go and have a COVID test. What happens if there's no one to take you home at this point in time? Well, we've designated a room or a place in all of our churches, which is an isolation room, which you can go to, and you can get some hygiene, some tissues and a mask. And then, after a period of time, you will then go home, either be taken home by someone, uh, or taken home by a family member, or, or someone from the church. But if you feel unwell, please leave the church as quietly as possible, and the wardens will check you as you go. So you'll see that the two wardens here, Tara and Greer, they have sheets and they are writing down some uh, things on the sheet. Uh, I wonder, Bishop, can you tell us what they are writing down or why they are writing down and recording on the sheets? Well, we need to record who's in church on Sunday. We know generally that everyone who comes, and normally our wardens count the number of people and put that in the preacher's book, but in this transitionary period while COVID is still active, we need to record who is here. Uh, that is because if someone got sick in church uh, and then tested positive for COVID, we would need to contact. And so therefore we need to trace who those people are in church. And what about visitors? Visitors will be asked for their contact details as well. And we thank you for your cooperation in that. This is to assure you that we're observing the health guidelines. And it is our hope and our prayer that no one in church will um, have the COVID infection uh, and no one spread that COVID infection. And that's what the wardens are doing. And what do we do when we leave church? Well, we're not meant to bunch up uh, and to gather in the church. We can gather outside observing social distancing, not in the porch or not at the church gate. Just be reminded uh, and be aware of other people and give them a good space. It's two meters at this point in time. And as we come into church, we'll be guided by the wardens to fill up from the front. Uh, and when we leave church, uh, the people at the back will leave church first and the wardens will guide everyone else uh, so that we can have a steady stream of people observing social distance. These are really good questions, and I hope these answers have given you some indication of what to expect when you come to church uh, in July in August. Remember, church is here for you, and we're here to worship, and all of these things have been designed in order for us to worship safely together. Again. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you, keep you, guard you, heal you, strengthen you, so that we can meet together in Jesus' name to love and to serve him and to give him thanks for his great goodness to us and to our land at this very, very difficult time. And we ask this in his great name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to catch your vision for these dioceses and for our parish. But to catch your vision, we first need to listen to you. Too often, often we leave you, leave you out. out. Forgive, Forgive us. Help us to catch a sense of where your spirit is leading. Give us courage to love and serve you. Give us boldness to proclaim Christ faithfully and to build. Your king. Lord, come to us. Our door is open.